What's up, everyone? You're listening to Lock Pond, simply the best blockchain and NFT podcast made for legends. Now, without further ado, let's get this started. We're your hosts, Khalid Shahabi, the marketing manager at Legends of Crypto, and David Freed, the Legends of Crypto game designer. And in this episode, we're joined by Simon Kurt Nogaro, the VP of Developer Success at Engine, to find out more about Engine, the possibility of traditional games applying NFTs into their own world, and the technology to bring fundamental change to the gaming industry. So you're the VP of the Developer Success in Engine, is that correct? Yep. And and I was looking into it, and Engine started in 2009, way way before NFTs started to kick off. So, so how how did it start, and how did it grow into what it is today? Yeah. So, um, Engine's original kind of business was a, as a social platform. So, it was a social community building platform. So, if you can imagine, um, you have a guild, or you have a Minecraft server, or you're you're a game developer, and you want to create a community. Um, back then, like the the most important thing uh, in your community was having a forum, basically. So you'd go onto Engine's platform, you'd create, you'd use their their CMS, their their content management system, to to create a forum and a website, and it would have like a ticketing system and chat chat rooms and everything that you need to really build a community within the gaming space at that point in time. Um, and yeah, it, it, it attracted a lot of, um, amazing projects it, it ended up with, um, hundreds of thousands of communities, 20 million users, um, and was a, was a great success for them. Uh, and then in 2017, or actually much earlier than that, um, VTech and Maxim, the, the CTO and, and, uh, CEO, um, they really kind of envisioned a new future for gaming where people truly, owned their items um, and they could own them forever. They could trade them freely. They could move them through multiple games. It would be like a persistent identity that you wouldn't throw away after leaving one game and starting a new game, which is what what the past basically forces players to do. Um, so I know that this was a was a huge vision for them, like for many years. And then in 2017, the time the time was right, and they they launched Engine Coin, um, and they started building the Engine platform. So the the 2009 uh, company was the Engine Network, and then in, and then since 2017 and onwards, they they started building the Engine platform, which is really about um, enabling game developers and game designers to integrate um, blockchain assets and NFTs specifically into their um, into their economies in a, without having to worry about building smart contracts and blockchains and and all of the complex stuff that that um frankly isn't really that fun to do. Um, so game developers and game designers can focus on doing what they love, crafting great experiences, telling great stories, um, and then let all of the 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 really kind of hectic security work that comes with building blockchain infrastructure leave leave that to Engine and they just plug in the APIs and and, and go from there. So yeah, um, the ecosystem's grown quite a lot since then. Um, uh, like VTech uh, invented the ERC eleven fifty five NFT standard in two thousand and seventeen, and since then, then that's that's gained widespread adoption. It's easily the fastest growing NFT standard in the world right now. Um, and um, and yeah, there's like sixty or something um, game developers and apps integrating NFTs into their into their games and apps through this platform. Um, there's a, you know, the, the, the whole world is wondering what NFTs can, will do next and, and what, what the final form of NFTs will be. Um, and this is kind of what VTech and Max envisioned back in 2017. The, the, the only form of NFTs to them was like high, high utility NFTs, items that you'd own forever and would be able to use them to unlock benefits and perks and skins and weapons and, you know, all of that kind of stuff in games and, and same thing in apps, just digital products kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, it's it's going to be an exciting um, exciting ride over the next few years, and and we hope that we can kind of show everyone what NFTs can do from a utility standpoint. Yeah, I mean, speaking of which, I've had a lot of trouble trying to get uh, even game developers, <laughs> particularly old school game developers, to sort of understand the NFTs and what they can do. It, what's the easiest way you've been able to sort of describe what Engine uh, does as a concept to to people who are new to the whole thing? Yeah, I really think of them as like physicalized assets, like physicalized digital assets in a way that have never been possible um, in the past. Like, you know, if you if you think about it, you go down the street and you buy a bike for, for $100, you're, 
you then own that bike forever. No one can just run into your house and take it off you out of your garage. Um, you can then, you know, ride the bike and resell it after a couple of years for around the same price, maybe more, maybe less. Um, and you, you just truly own that, that item. Um, and, and basically, um, that's exactly what I, what I think NFTs are really. It's so it's the only way to really physicalize and make your digital assets or digital items tangible. Um, and in a way that, um, yeah, that, that, that they're not like stuck within a game server. It's actually on the blockchain and it, and it's like within your wallet that, that, that you have complete custody over. Um, I think that to me is just the most important thing. Uh, I know like to a lot of game developers, that's not very attractive because frankly, it's like, how do I make money out of that? Um, but, you know, um, at the end of the day, it is attractive to users. And if you, if you want to kind of um, be on the cutting edge of technology, sh- give users a, a, a benefit in your game that other, that other games are providing, then this is a very easy thing to adopt, to be honest with you. And, and you can pave the way forward for the, for the new digital economy. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of ways that it that it can be attractive for game developers. In terms of, of you get paid whenever you make new content, people will buy that from you. The issue that I see in the long term is that these things never go away. <laughs> so yeah. like a bike eventually breaks down. Um like and especially in our the the way that consumerism has been done mo- in a modern sense, things are built to be obsolete. Yeah. Like, everyone's replacing their phones every two years um is that is that just a mindset we need to break people out of and like return to this sort of like old-fashioned idea of like you you buy a high quality thing and it lasts forever (laughs) yeah that's a really good point that's really interesting point i think um fundamentally um the the nft uh adoption monetization model is is completely different to the um to the traditional gaming monetization model uh, the traditional model you you sell and people buy <laughs> and it's just the one it's a one way street people just buy off you uh, and that's the only way um with the with the nft monetization model you sell and then people buy and then they start to resell and they buy off each other and you have these people that are essentially um you know it's a secondary market so people are essentially competing with you in a way. But the beauty of blockchain is that you can actually monetize that secondary market as well and, and get like a, a a small commission off every secondary sale that that, that that takes place. Or you can literally have transfer fees. So every single time someone moves an item from one wallet to another, then you can get paid. Um, and I think that this has the most amazing network effects um, that I've ever seen because you have all of these users out here like promoting your game, promoting your assets, telling everyone how amazing your game is and and that they should go and play it and then they should buy these assets from them or they should work together with them to earn these ass- these assets and and basically um, build a guild or build a build a build a kind of um, you know a, a play business kind of thing. Um, and this kind of situation, like it's amazing for for user acquisition because you're out there, um, you're you're doing your marketing, and you have all of these people that are um, that are aligned with you. Their motivations are aligned with you in a way that they want to share more. They create more content for you, and we're we're seeing this. Like it's just it's just crazy. Like some of these um, successful games, how much content is just popping out, popping um this this successful nft game specifically how much content is being created and also the 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 user retention rates um, are amazing too because someone joins the community they want to play the game they want to learn how to how to do it and and everyone uh, accepts them with open arms because that's someone that you can collaborate with and and essentially trade with and and it's it's a really like you know if you think about the economy today imagine how like the, the real world economy imagine how boring it would be if the only person you could buy anything off was the government like that that's what that's what traditional gaming is like me and you would never have any reason to trade or, or work together or collaborate or, or compete or or anything like so i think that um this this new form of like you know user generated value um is basically the next next paradigm that will take over user generated content and i think it's going to uh, inspire like so much creativity and, and it's just going to um just create like better value systems within um collaborative environments like gaming yeah i, I mean that's one of those things that i think uh game developers has been like moving towards for a long time like you'll, totally. you'll hear it every once in a while like, like uh, blizzard's titan 
they were like, oh, players are going to have their own in-game economy where they build stuff and they, they're tradesmen and they can trade stuff with each other. But I don't think that really works when you have infinite generation of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So there has to be some sort of limitation on resources. And, and then I'm, I'm still not sure what that looks like. And like, I understand what that looks like in terms of like, you can only mint X amount of things, but in a game world, can you have situations where like in Minecraft, you actually mine out the world? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, then what's left for, for the new players, is that still fun for them or not? Like, probably not. So like, yeah, it's an amazingly um, hard thing to balance. And, and I think that um, it, it, I think, I think it's more, more going to be about um, um, having like, you know, OG items, like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, like generation zero, generation one items that, that are, that are clearly um, special, not necessarily in a in a pay to win scenario where where you, where it's like going to help you uh, kill other players easier and 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 that kind of thing. Because basically anything that's an NFT is a pay to win risk because it's it's on it's it's on the market. So whoever's richest can get it. Um, but um, but yeah, I think um, like I know in Fortnite, like people are really really proud of their OG skins and this kind of thing, like. NFTs actually allow you to um, to map that out in a in a in a lot clearer way. You literally just go to the blockchain explorer and see when that skin was minted, and well, that's obviously the ogest OG skin of all, and that's what CryptoPunks are really. Um, so um, so yeah, I think I think that's the the way to go. Really, um, people are always going to need new items. Um, inflation's always going to happen. Um, but yeah, if the, if the first items are special, um, and, and clearly special, I think then that's okay. Um, this, this concept of like an in-game economy is not really new. It's, I mean, I've, I've played games trying to make money before, like, like as a, as a teenager, um, yeah. and, and they don't work very well because they have your grind forever to make like a few cents if you're lucky. So people don't even end up playing them because they're not fun and they don't make enough money to make it worth their time. So, um, you know, NFTs are kind of like, I mean, the way I see it, they're kind of like the evolution of, of you know, what started and, what, and what's coming next. Because an in-game economy where you can actually make like real money out of is not, a, is not exactly a new concept, it's, but this is a totally new approach to something that's been tried and for the most part failed. Yeah, yeah. I read it really interesting articles a couple of years ago about um RuneScape, like classic yeah. RuneScape, <laughs> um, like gold farmers in Venezuela earning more money than lawyers in in Venezuela. Um, it's just amazing. So um, so yeah, there's there's definitely a market for it. I, I think that it could be like a great equalizer in a lot of ways, where you know people in in countries that are that are time rich and cash poor. Um, they can trade their time for for our cash, and you know, and, and I think that would feel good for for both parties. So, so yeah, I'm I'm really interested in that. I I definitely want to find a way to make it work. But as you mentioned before, you know, inflation um, is is an incredibly hard thing to to balance, and I don't think any country gets it right, let alone game developers. So yeah, it's it's an interesting problem. David, does that does that does that open up your ethical NFT scenario sweatshops? Well, it, <laughs> it, it neither. It's there's no solution that I can find. Like not really. Like, uh, what happens when people start funneling people into a warehouse and forcing them to, to find <laughs> NFTs? Like, what do we do? Oh, like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Oh no, that breaks everything. <laughs> it kind of does. So that that's what I'm looking at right now. And like, there, all the solutions are sort of sp specific in terms of like, ah, uh, this IP address has a bunch of people doing stuff, and then they just get more careful about it. It becomes this escalating war that I'm not sure how it ends or what to do about it. My and my then, question would be like, as a as a sweat uh, as a worker, like, what would be the benefit of being in some guy's sweatshop as opposed to just being on your own computer at home? You get to live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like they literally like force people to do it. That's how. Oh, that's generally what yeah. happens. Yeah, they get chained. Oh desks. wow! Oh so, wow! Yeah, there's only so much we can do to stop it. But that's happening. Like that happens, does it? Hmm. Oh. Well, I, I mean, I haven't seen a case of it with uh, NFTs yet, 
but no, I think it's but in the games market. Time. Yeah, uh, in gold farming for sure. But like, gold wow, farming, so it's almost wow. a prestigious thing because you get to be in an air conditioned thing instead of a you know in a actual sweatshop where it's like hot and you're like miserable and you're sewing clothes. So it's kind of a step yeah. up in a lot of those uh, places where it happens, but it's still not good for the economy. But in a normal economy, you just delete the gold and you ban the accounts. Yeah. So what do you do when it's NFT wallets? I mean, you can burn the assets and stuff, but then you're destroying your own economy yeah. and people lose trust because it's like, if the developer can just get rid of these, then what was the point of the NFTs yeah. in the first place? No, that's, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I, that's something to wrap my head around. That's huge. I didn't know that was happening at all. Um, so, yeah well <laughs> leave that one with me <laughs> it's inevitable that it will happen i haven't i don't know of any specific cases like there hasn't been a breaking news article that's like 200 kids found buried alive in nft farming thing or something like that hasn't happened yet um but it's gonna <laughs> look uh, um people are like that having having high barriers to entry does that solve the solution or is that just because that just minimizes the solution. You know, so let's let's take Axie Infinity as an example. They have a high barrier to entry. You have to spend quite a lot to get into the game. Um, how attractive is that to people who want to do something like that? I mean, it, it actually might even make it worse. Okay. Yeah. Because um, then if you want to get into that space, now you have to go to the, the gatekeepers. And yeah, the like, institution all right, just... will have all of the axes to rent to to the to the sweatshop guys, basically. Yeah, step into my basement. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> chain to a desk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now what? Oh, that's horrible. Um, so, like, yeah, if I anything, think... if anything, like just lowering the barriers to entry to the ground, and then making it so so kind of um, profitable, basically for for the workers, that it's like you know why would you want to share your cut when literally you can just do it yourself and then buy yourself an air conditioner <laughs> essentially um yeah yeah i mean i guess that way at least um if it happens then it's probably being done illegally because those people could have done it on their own and, and made more money that way yeah 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 but then like creating that kind of economy is incredibly difficult because like um like a pay to earn economy um it kind of like it kind of depends on a constant inflow of new users bringing in new money or i mean someone's got to be putting money into the economy for other people to take it out so it's um yeah it's just uh, incredibly hard to be able to provide everyone that that much value to be able to afford air conditioners um to that yeah it's it's an incredible problem but it's an incredible opportunity too yeah well I, well that's the one of the uh, pushbacks I get when I talk about NFTs with other people is that they're like, isn't it just a pyramid scheme? Because you do need people coming in and, and paying into it. But it's like, no, we're actually producing a game. And like, mm. it's the same in terms of like, if someone produces a, a bicycle or, or yeah. a video game itself, you're purchasing the video game that work went into that. So it's not it's not a pyramid scheme per se. I mean, <laughs> but, it, the whole economy is, if, if that's what they're calling a pyramid scheme, then the whole economy is a, is a pyramid scheme because whoever whoever was here first and had the businesses first um, obviously takes the, the lion's share of the, the revenue. Um, so, what, so what you're saying is that, no, you're, you're providing a service, you're providing products and people are, are purchasing them off you. And, and I'm totally agreeing. Like that's the hard thing. It's to, to create products that are so wanted and so with with such high demand that um that it can not only feed your company but you know feed feed everyone feed all the players as or or at least like you know half the players as well um yeah i mean i i understand the the inclination to think that way simply because so many of the companies that i've seen do look like a, a cash grab they're like ah oh, we'll just copy hearthstone and <laughs> get get I mean, that way that's uh that's a great that's a great problem and and something that games like Legends of Crypto and anybody else who's like getting started has to find like even a better solution to. Um, we'll follow up on that one once our games are out. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's a broader question there though. 
is capitalism a pyramid scheme? <laughs> yeah, it's, it obviously is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it 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 has it has outcomes, and and some, I'd say like at least half of those are positive. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, um, so I have a I have a question. So like a blockchain based ecosystem can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, right? So so engines a blockchain based ecosystem. The Legend of Crypto is a blockchain slash NFT based game, and we have our own ecosystem. Um, so, is it? Do you think it's like a malleable definition for you, or, or do you have like a more concrete definition of of what is a blockchain based ecosystem? Um, me or um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't really um, have a definition of of what a blockchain based ecosystem is. Um, I think to to have an ecosystem, you need to have a community, um, and then it just needs to be a, uh, running with uh, blockchain, uh, some kind of blockchain products or economy, and, and I'd be happy to call it an ecosystem. Really, hmm. um, how would you convert a to NFTs? Like, how do you make the infinite ecosystems that they have into an NFT supporting one without all the ridiculous inflationary issues that we talked about before. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have to build it from the ground up, to be honest with you. Like, I, I think it's like, I mean, you can, you can layer NFTs on top of it pretty easily. So you could just have the existing game and then, oh, cool. Well, here are some new items and these are NFTs and, and this kind of thing. Like that's, um, if I was going to try to convert a game, an existing game, that's, that's how I'd kind of go about it and then just try to, phase it towards the nfts and then eventually everyone only cares about the nfts and then you can start to convert the underlying um infrastructure but um yeah i think um the only way i can see that working because you know these games really um they rely on on being able to provide like um extrinsic rewards um as, as in like you know you do something you get something you do something you get something you do something you get something basically forever so it, it relies on that inflation just like the real world economy does um and basically um so yeah it's 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 fundamentally the, the only real way to do it is to maintain that but also just make sure that the things that were offered earlier are clearly special in some way. Even if it's just like, even if it just says on there that they're on the NFT, that this is, this was released this year and this was released that year. Like people are going to assign value to that. And I think that's kind of the, the only way if you, if you are going for an inflationary kind of game, um, I think the, 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 the really interesting thing is, um, you know, there's there's a wider creator economy that's wanting to get into uh, the NFT space, artists and um, musicians and and all of this kind of thing. And these are these are assets of um, incredible value, like sentimental value. Like you know, you hear it, emotional value. You hear music, you see art, and and it, it makes you feel something. You want that. So I think um, integrating these kind of in, in these kind of um, creations into into gaming is going to be very interesting and distributing them through gaming that's definitely something that i'm doing at, at my company my metaverse um so yeah i mean that's that's a form of inflation that's based on each each creators constantly coming up with something new and, and creative inflation i think that's a that that's going to be a, a very um powerful thing uh in the nft space basically um Simon, you're also you're also the CEO of My Metaverse. Can you can you touch on that a bit and what makes My Metaverse unique? Yeah, so essentially, we really want to kind of make a, a Steam like discovery game discovery platform um, where you can go on there, you, you you go through all of the games and and you find the ones that you want. Um, so to do that, we're we're building an infrastructure to make it even easier to adopt the engine ecosystem and, and NFTs and blockchain. So just you know, very simple APIs with um, very simple game mechanics, just kind of out of the box, where where a game developer can literally go, oh, I want to make this kind of loot box, and then they go onto our website and just go, all right, that's done, and now I'll just ping that API, and and a user will be able to open it and, and receive the NFTs out of it. So we really just want to like make the economic um, the building of an economy and the building of the of really like solid gameplay mechanics just as easy for them as possible and that way if we have um the new wave of of game developers wanting to get into the nft space a platform like that that has um 
you know, it, it's very easy to adopt and it can have like monetization models and, and user acquisition models and user retention models built into it, it becomes very attractive to, to a game developer. So um, on top of that, of course, um, we also want to attract lots of users to the game so we can say, hey, like, you know, um, we have this user base, we'd love to share it with you and, and that kind of thing. So that's essentially what my metaverse is. Now to get that done, what we've done first is we've uh, we've launched a Minecraft server and integrated NFTs into that. Uh, next, we're launching a, a GTA server, a GTA roleplay server. We're going to uh, add NFTs into that. And then we're launching a Unity game as well, um, and and that's going to be that's going to be really good because we don't have like as many restrictions. You know, if you if you build in Minecraft and GTA, you're you're really in Mojang and and Rockstar's world, so um you have to play by their rules. But when we're building our own game, we can do whatever we want, and uh, and all of these games are powered by our APIs, which we then plan to expose to to the rest of the development community and and allow them to just use. So this was. Like as someone that's never done game development or game design myself, um, this was just the only really way that, that we could really learn exactly what people needed in the development community and then build exactly what what would solve their problems for them. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the roadmap anyway. So you, you mentioned GTA, and I'm assuming that's an online version. Is there a yeah, way yeah. to integrate NFTs into... Um, you know, offline games or is it exclusively got to be connected to a server? Yeah. Yeah. It has to be connected to a server because otherwise a hacker can just um, decompile the, the, the client app and just send themselves NFTs whenever they want. So the, the NFT distribution mechanics need to be server side and, and yeah, even if it is a single player game, you still need to have those protections on the server. Um, but yeah, I mean, NFTs work better. Um, well, actually, no, um, there are some games that are doing really amazingly with single player experiences with NFTs. Yeah. And how do you imagine items moving between like totally different games? Like how does a, you know, a rifle in GTA end up in Minecraft and, and what does that look like? I imagine it being very, very cool, but, <laughs> but in real life, it's very hard to do um, because like these games, they, the, the 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 balancing of the economy is so um is so hard and it's something that i'm really bad at i'm just lucky i have good people um to to do that for me um but yeah if you have all of these all of these guns flying out of gta and then suddenly they're just in minecraft and they're completely op then, then you know what do you do it's just it's just so hard to balance but it's something that we have to try and we have to learn. And, uh, you know, it's, it, this is the perfect kind of setup for us to be able to, to, to do that kind of stuff. So we definitely are going to, but um, yeah, it's, it's really hard. Just a lot of trial and error basically is how, um, how we generally work. So, so, so is, is that the goal? Like, is it basically to move um, NFTs from one game to another, like let's say like a legends of crypto card to Minecraft, or is it like moving items within the same game but different servers kind of thing oh uh, yes yeah, it's, it's, uh, through different games for sure and different okay. apps and, and everything um i think that's the coolest reality that that that, uh, that i've all that this that's kind of like the big thing that um i remember on engines white paper in 2017 and i read it and then vtech was saying something about oh this means if they're on the blockchain they're outside of the server so different games can read the blockchain and and see that this player has the item that means that you can then use the item in multiple games and i was just like whoa this is it like holy this oh man this is the future um so this is the future that i've that we've all been dreaming of for 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 four years now um i'm in a position to be able to experiment with it a lot in in some really cool games uh, and i intend to um, within limitations, obviously there's there's limitations with especially Rockstar's end user license agreement, but um, but yeah, um, we definitely want to have that cross game experience, the cross game persistence of reality as much as possible. Yeah, balancing that sort of stuff is, is something that I have to consider as well. But um, fortunately for us, I'm making a card game, so it's not not so difficult to take any item from any game or any character from any game and sort of create stats that work in, in our card game and, and have them have mm. a unique ability that, that works in that way. Um, then it's just a question of like, how much time do I spend integrating these NFTs from all these different games? Like how many can I actually support? <clears throat> and I, that's where I'm running into logistical 
questions <laughs> in terms of like, yeah, once this NFT market starts exploding and everyone's got NFTs in their game, can I really support millions of NFTs in my game? <laughs> like, what, what are the to... kind of, um, what are the file size for an asset for you? Like, you know, it's a card, but is there like, um, you know, there'd be a model for every one of them, right? So it's, it's, it's more weight added to the client that players then need to download, wouldn't it be? That's part of the logistics that I haven't really worked <laughs> through yet. Because uh, for now, we're just doing our card game and any collaborations that we do. And then mm. the plan is sort of down the line to also start integrating NFTs from other games, whether or not they want to. And that's kind of <laughs> question. <laughs> like, if, if, let's say that I start uh, making NFTs for Axie Infinity's uh, stuff, and just to like go, hey, Axie Infinity people, come try our game. You've already got a set of cards because you have uh, Axies. How are they going to feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, if it's controversial, you might get extra, extra PRs. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe it doesn't matter how they feel. <laughs> it, it I shouldn't say that, but um, well, I mean, I'm sure I, I, I'm sure they would be very happy. To be honest, you're just adding utility and value to their NFTs. Like, I think that's a great right. thing. Well, that's the thing. Like, people in our game would be like, if they see a really cool Axie card in in our game, they'll be like, oh, I need to go play Axie to get that that NFT so that I can have it in the card game to to build this super cool deck that I want to do. Exactly. So I, that's really I cool. hope. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I hope that it goes in that direction, that people see it as like, ah, cool, we're all working together towards something greater. But there's also my fear, <laughs> based on just the way I've seen capitalist endeavors go, is the the fear that, uh, no, I don't want you touching my NFTs, and then it becomes intellectual property right wars. <laughs> yeah, I guess I mean if you're actually like using the Axie images in in your game and stuff, like that's where the IP issues would come in. But if you just kind of you know make make something that's clearly not a not a breach of their their visuals well, or something like that, it shouldn't. I've thought about this a lot actually. So what I would yeah. do is parody. So I yeah like, yeah yeah. I just totally roast the shit out of anyone. <laughs> who would cooperate. So so this is my warning to other developers right now: cooperate with me, or I will make the I will make so much fucking fun of your game. <laughs> <laughs> In very real ways. I will criticize the shit out of your design. I'll play your games just to tear them apart, and then I will make cards about it. So work with me or else. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. That'll get people talking. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. That last so sentence yeah, is think... gonna be a meme. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I am um I am kind of skeptical on how how much um th that will work if it's not in a collaborative if if they're not like le legitimately like promoting you and pushing players towards you. I'm not sure how much how many players like you can get from that. Um, because again, you're just adding value to the NFTs, but the people aren't going to necessarily even know that you added that value unless the, the game is actually partnered up and pushing them towards you and, and talking about that value. Um, and you're even collaborating on content and you're actually making videos together about how this item and th this item moves through these different games. Like you can make amazing video content. That's, I think that's the biggest, like, that's the biggest, like marketing benefit is the, the video content you could make about that would spread like wildfire. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's sort of what I, the direction that I'd like to go. I'd like to see like, uh, game designers, in a live stream working together like going, okay so what's this card going to do and, and how, how does our card work in your game and like yeah and forth like live design meetings like i made a whole youtube channel to try and teach people design and and uh uh it's not popular so <laughs> <laughs> maybe this will help yeah. when there's money yeah. involved um, yeah that, that actually makes you think, okay? So like if you're moving NFTs around different servers, let's say let's say within GTA in this example, um, does that give players an unfair advantage? Like let's say somebody who has like a like a lot of a lot of like expensive stuff, like a helicopter and like all sorts of weapons, moves it to like a newer server that applies the same NFT, the same um, you know, NFTs and stuff to their server. Would that give players an unfair advantage? Um, yeah, I mean NFTs are. Uh 
inherently pay to win. Like even if you you're you're the game designer and you're giving them out for free, they they then reach the marketplace and who then the richest people end up with the best NFTs basically. So um if so it's really important not to have M- NFTs like affect PVP scenarios too much. Like you know it's kind of fine like in in Minecraft if you're doing like PVE and it's just a survival world and and sure like you know I'll pay. Um, pay some money to like be able to do some things faster. It's not really impact. It's not really hurting anyone else or, or negatively impacting their experience. Um, they might get a little bit jealous, but like nothing, nothing crazy. But if someone can buy like a, a crazy sword and then they just run up to you and one hit you just because they're rich, like that's uh, and and you die and you literally like lose your stuff and and you get frustrated from that. That's that's heartbreaking. Like that. That's very toxic. So yeah, it's it's. It's going to be very hard to implement uh, NFTs in in PvP in any in any meaningful way, in my view. I mean, that's a that's a very that's a very big problem in gaming in general. Like this whole pay to win mm-hmm. concept, people despise it. It, it is. Yeah, it, it's something totally. I'm I'm trying to tackle in terms of um, the way that I'm approaching it for our card game uh, is that I want a regular version of all cards that is always available, and then if that runs out we do a second edition printing and keep the price uh, accessible. And Mm. then the first edition obviously would be more valuable. And then there's also elite and prestige editions, which are the same Mm. power level, but have different uh, artwork and uh, borders and things. So there's a way to do it. And so it's more cosmetics across all games. Yeah. Yeah. It's more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, And uh, you can have some, some stuff with like a little bit of power or just differences in power. But you have to be mm. really careful with the design of those. Yeah. Um, but but I have a question for you. <laughs> so I saw on your LinkedIn that uh, your your official title is the the vice president of developer success. So yeah. <laughs> what is your modus operandi when it comes to uh, helping developers succeed, and and what tools are you using, and how committed are you to that goal? Yeah, so basically, um, VP of Developer Success is all about um, just making sure that engines tools are um, being used in a way that creates the best user experience. So it's like basically when when it comes down to it, um, like I'll I'll jump on a call with new developers. I'll talk to them about um, their their outlying goals, uh, what kind of user experience they want to um, create, and then I'll kind of try to. Um, consult with them on, on how to actually use the engine platform and, and NFTs to kind of, you know, um, maximize their, their, their player retention and their, their player acquisition and, and also monetize in a way that makes sense. Um, so it's kind of like, that's, that's really, um, the, the, the very core of it. But on top of that, of course, it's making sure that I can unblock any issues that they have with the, the engine with, with, with adopting NFTs at all. Um, and making sure that the development process is smooth, you know, the, the operating costs aren't, aren't skyrocketing because they're trying to adopt um, NFTs. In fact, like we we want to we want to make sure that people are you know um, spending like less or, or or just the same as they would have spent, like you know having to build their build their own database and, and build their own inventory system. You just use the blockchain instead. Um, so um so yeah, it's about um, keeping their costs low or, or the same, or um, and and also making sure that they can. Um, you know, attract users, retain users, and, and monetize uh, efficiently. Sounds like a successful plan. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a dad now, so I make dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a, it's a it's a really great job. Um, I'm I'm kind of like um, uh, we're we're building like a whole team there, and and they're taking more of. Um, more of the lead there now and, I, and I'm focusing more on my metaverse um, you know being I've got like uh, kind of got like a, a really great team there that I need to support too so um, so yeah it's just a, it's interesting balancing both but at the same time like my work at my metaverse has been able to allow me to do such a better job um, with engine and for engine as well because I'm, I'm literally going through the same thing that, that the game devs are going through and and um, you know I'm, I'm one of them uh, essentially these days well not a dev but you know it's not well i mean <laughs> is you're you're developing a game so effectively yeah. is it yeah cool awesome oh game dev that makes you me are. feel good <laughs> does it why yeah the, i don't know we're, we're notoriously low paid from one game also, dev to another uh, yeah <laughs> do you know what the burnout rate is in the game development industry no 
the the average game dev leaves before their 10th year wow and then they just become an accountant or something yeah (laughs) Uh, most of them actually a lot of the ones that i knew became brewers for some reason oh yeah yeah they needed it after that 10 years basically (laughs) (laughs) no um i don't know like i've always just um thought of game devs as like the pinnacle of creativity it's like you need to be you need to be uh, an economic genius you need to you need to understand like humanity you need to you need to be able to build communities you need to be able to you know build a good game like build good game loops build build worlds you know you're a world builder like i don't know it's it's a it's something that i've always held up to high esteem so it's something that i i very i've I've never really been able to call myself because i don't feel like i'm worthy like (laughs) (laughs) well i mean you you're creating a pedestal that that maybe you shouldn't like every game developer is different every game developer has different strengths and weaknesses uh myself included Mm. like um i have a like very minor background in in college i was studying psychology and stuff and that sort of informed Mm. how i do user experience and that was why i was so good at level design so because i knew Mm. uh players will react to this that way and so forth and that just became my growth process for the next like 15 years is understanding how players interact with the games and then understanding all of my experiences when i play games and that informed how i do other stuff and then the i also just happened to be a creative person in terms of like i liked writing stuff and i grew up doing creative writing stuff and and making dungeons and dragons games and, and and playing with my friends and things like that so those sort of blended together into now I'm now I consider myself like a very strong narrative designer and then my economy stuff is kind of weak because I don't really understand the economy or at least whenever I analyze it I'm like this doesn't work this is broken (laughs) am I just wrong (laughs) but everything keeps getting proven to like oh no actually it really is just broken yeah well it was really cool talking to you about uh all of this i'm i'm kind of wanting to to look at uh, the engine tools now myself yeah i mean i'd love to show um, you around and, and do my developer success thing and show you what i do yeah, <laughs> prove that i'm actually i'll prove that i actually work for engine <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's true guys it. <laughs> <laughs> okay cool. Well, uh, Simon, thank you. Um, you know, can't wait! Can't wait to catch up with you. Hopefully, as characters. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll to jump into top. GTA and do our next podcast there. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for your time. Great to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too.